London in the early 1950s. Bit rough to be honest. Like the war, only without the bombing raids. A lot of fog, smoke and ruined buildings. Everything was rationed. Even the powdered eggs we seemed to be living on. London was literally climbing out of the ruins of World War II. It wasn't an easy time. But we were back to work, getting our feet back on the ground. It was my city. My friends. Back then it meant mostly white and English, dressed in wool and heavy tweeds. But we loved a good pint. And so here I am, in Trafalgar Square, 60 years later. And I decide to have a look at the future, now the present. And I step into it. Some things look the same. Some things look very different. Nelson's Column, Trafalgar Square, the National Gallery, the fountains. It was my city, but somehow I feel like a stranger. Everything's different. The first thing I notice is people from all over the world, restaurants of every nationality, Food I've never even heard of. Well, maybe cafe au lait. It's all a bit overwhelming. Like being in a foreign country. Until I see the mousetrap still running. And I notice that actually, London looks amazing. The people are amazing. The whole world seems to come here and celebrate life. Food. Culture faith. And I have an idea. Talk to people. Talk to people who come from other countries, but now make London their home. They can tell me more about their own cultures and traditions because they live far away from them. You get a perspective here in London, with other people from all over the world. What matters to them? What are their values? What do they believe? People who have come from every corner of the planet and who have transformed London from the ruins of the Blitz to the cultural capital of the world. I start with Italy. My friend Dante takes me for a cappuccino at Bar Italia and tells me about Italian wine, good food, how and what it means to be Italian. Say the bella figura, which is, means it's uh, being aware of the way you are, the way you look, the way people look at you, the way you look at people. Uh, this is he tells me Italians never just stand on the street, they pose. I go to Greece with Eugenia, and she tells me it's all about the Mediterranean. Um, if it's a pebble beach, if it's a sand beach, if it's white sand, if it's black sand, if it's green. Then to China. Probably our attitude towards work. Um, work plays such a big part in our, our lives, it plays a big part in our society because we don't have social security. I find out about doing business in Russia and why it helps to be able to handle vodka. Test you as well, how much you can drink and they will try to, you know, convince you to eat sometimes. I find out why the Japanese seem so reserved to me. Yeah, I was taught not to want things or to um, explicitly say so. Um, it was. Um... She explains to me the contradictions in their culture and beliefs, but how it all makes sense. Let's not forget the Brits. That's a very fair point to make, and that is, the British people do pride themselves in being fair. They do. In Brazil and Latin America, I find out how important personal and family connections are to business, for pleasure, even selling aircraft to the world. And then to Africa. Yes, um, you could never walk into an African man's house, but even if they were poor, they would offer you food straight away, even if it was... My friend house. tells me about the difficult problems in Africa. It's all true. War, Famine, poverty. But what's also true 
is that like England after World War II, they too have a future. And finally, I speak to Monica, who tells me about the people of India and what matters to them. She's also a cross-cultural expert, so she gives me terrific insight into how nationalities compare and interact, and what a powerful tool understanding other cultures can actually be. What I learned is the world is so connected. Business is done every day sharing cultures, languages and beliefs that are all so different. But all of them can be found right here in London. An extraordinary city that has transformed itself in 60 years from the rubble of war to an amazing crossroads of people, ideas, creativity, music and business. From all over the planet, And somehow those values and traditions that are quintessentially British remain in some ways stronger than ever. And more importantly and more interestingly to us, um, London has become the cultural hub of the world. To me it represents what future will look like or what future cities will look like. London. My city. My friends. And some things never go out of fashion. Like a good cup of tea. Though I'm told now I have to smoke outside.